Now, how do I go about actually graphing my piecewise function? Well, you just start by handling each of the pieces as their own graph, okay? And then we will, then we will restrict them. So the first one I'm going to look at is this top equation here, x plus 5. Now, that's a linear equation, and I need to remember, well, how do I graph x plus 5? Remember, y is equal to x plus 5. I know how to graph a linear equation like this because the slope of this line is equal to 1, and the y-intercept is at 5. So if I start at 5 on my graph, and I, I'm going to start right there, and I rise 1, run 1, up one to the right, and we are positive, so that's why I'm moving in this direction, then I would have a graph that would look something like this if I were to draw the function out. Okay, If I were to extend the line in all directions, this is what my line would look like. Now, we want to go back though because remember our piecewise functions have restrictions. I'm only allowed to look at this piece of the graph when my x values are greater than or equal to negative 5. So let's find negative 5 on the graph, that would be here, and I am going to erase any part of the graph which is less than that value. And I gotta connect my line again. Okay, so this is my piece of the, of the equation for x values greater than or equal to negative 5. In other words, I erased the portion of the graph that was outside of this restriction. Now let's look at the second portion of my piecewise function. This says negative of x plus 5 for values of x that are less than negative 5. So if y is equal to a negative times x plus 5. I would probably take this and let's rewrite it as negative x minus 5 by distributing and getting rid of the parentheses. Now it's easier for me to see that the slope of this line is a negative 1 and the intercept is occurring at negative 5. So I'm going to come down here on my graph and I'm going to find negative 5 on the y-axis and a negative slope means that it's going to be in this direction here. So I'm going to rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. And I can see that this function is going to go in this direction here. I probably didn't draw that very good on the top part, but that's what it's doing. Now, we don't want the whole line though, do we? So let's go back up here and look again. I'm only interested in the portion of the line where x values are less than negative 5. So if this is the x value at negative 5, I only want x values that are less than negative 5. So I need to get rid of this bottom portion of the graph, get rid of that, and I'm only interested in this portion here because those that's the portion of the line where my x values are less than negative 5. Now, because I am less than and not less than or equal to, just less than, that means that I cannot include this portion, this negative 5, in this portion of the graph. Okay, so I would draw an open circle around what I already have there. I would draw an open circle for the red line indicating that for this piece of my function, negative 5 is not allowed. I could have anything up to but not including negative 5. So that's how we're going to draw it. Now let's come over here and evaluate the function for different areas or for different values I should say. So the first one let's look at is, what would my function value be at zero? So if I'm at zero here, in other words, remember this inside number is my x value. So if x is zero, what is the corresponding y value? When x is zero, you can see I am at four, five here on the graph. Okay, but algebraically, what would we do? Well, we would essentially plug in zero to one of these two equations here, but which one would I choose? Zero 
is greater than negative 5, so we would choose the blue one. Okay, so g of 0 equals 0 plus 5, or in other words, 5. And that does line up with what I thought it would be on my graph. But that's how we do it. We choose. We have to make a choice. Which one of these two do I want to plug in my 0 at? Now, I cannot plug it into the yellow equation, or the second equation, 0, because 0 is not less than negative 5. So we don't even bother with this guy. How about the next one right here? So g of negative 6, which of these two am I going to choose? Well, negative 6 is less than negative 5, so we're going to plug it into the yellow equation, which would look like a negative of negative 6 plus 5, and that would be a negative 1 times a negative, which would be a positive 1. So when my function is negative 6, or in other words, when x is negative 6, the y value would be a 1, which would be here on my graph if I would have drawn it clearly. Finally, let's look at this guy right here. I want to evaluate the function at when x is negative 5. So if I have to choose, which of these two do I choose? When x is negative 5 cannot be in the yellow equation because it's not allowed to be, you know, it's, it's not equal here. I have to plug it into the top equation. This one says that x can be greater than or equal to negative 5. So to evaluate g of negative 5, we look at the blue equation, which was a negative 5 plus 5, which is really just 0. And that makes sense. So when x is negative 5, my y value is 0. And that's how we would evaluate the function. Now, how do I handle the domain of this function? So I'm going to go and I'm going to get rid of this notation that we used to be able to graph with. And I want to be able to talk about the domain of this function. Remember that the domain is dealing with all of the possible x values. So we can see here that my x values are going to come in from the left. They're good, they're good, they're good. And then all of a sudden right here, I have kind of a dilemma. I am not allowed to include the number negative 5 on my red function, but I can include the number negative 5 on the blue function. So although I cannot include it for the red function, but I can pick it up on the blue function and it's the same number, then I can actually include negative 5 in my uh, domain. And as we go along, you can see that all the other values of x are going to be okay. So the domain in this case is going to be from negative to positive infinity. And let's talk about the range. The range are the possible y values. So the smallest value of y that I'm ever going to get is here at 0. So we would include 0. And then the largest value of y that I'm going to get is off to positive infinity. So the domain of the function, although five, negative 5 is not allowed for one piece, it is allowed for the other piece, and therefore it, it gets picked up, and I can include it in the domain of the function.